Welcome, guys, to another episode. I'm really excited about this one. I've been looking forward to it for a very long time. Um, and we've got a very special guest um, who's in the field of dentistry that I really enjoy the most, which is orthodontics. We've got Dr. Claudia Pinter with me today, and she's really going to be sharing um, her story into orthodontics and uh, some of the things that she's seeing when it comes to aligner therapy. So, really looking forward to the nuggets that she's going to be sharing with us. How did you get into dentistry and how did you get um, into orthodontics as a speciality? That's an interesting question. I guess that as most of us dentists, we we all started doing medicine because we have this genuine pursuit of helping people. You probably have the same feeling as I do that you want to help people, you know, want to preserve their health. And I wasn't interested about teeth at all at the beginning. And, um, but this is why I did medicine. I, I had, to, I knew that I enjoy helping others. And I think being a dentist really is helping someone at its best because, you know, someone comes in with toothache and within one appointment in 20 minutes, you can get them out of pain. You can transfer them from being miserable to be happy again. And which doctor has this feeling of accomplishment, you know, it is feeling of success. Usually they just give out medication and it gets better gradually, but we can really, you know, fix something in one appointment. And yeah, then I, I somehow went to fixing smiles. You know, I really enjoy giving someone confidence with their smile, with their teeth. Um, so yeah, this is how I stumbled into orthodontics. Yes, exactly. So um, for me, it was important to do dentistry at the beginning. I think it gives us a much better overview over the field. You know, it's it's if you want to go into ortho, you need to know about the other disciplines in order to uh, provide the best treatment plan for a patient, especially if you're treating adult patients where things are more complex. And yeah, so... I did dentistry, but I totally fell in love with creating smiles. You know, I'm, I'm a very creative uh, person, so this is why I, where I felt most comfortable. And I guess you can, you can, you know, that feeling of being, you know, the creator of something. Yes, definitely. You know, one thing that surprised me when I was on your page was the fact that um, you actually have gotten involved in you know restoring teeth with composites and you know reshaping teeth you know that's not something I see very often from orthodontists I don't think I know an orthodontist <laughs> who really gets stuck in sometimes with um building out smiles after their ortho treatment so um do you find that that's a normal thing in, in your part of the world or you know what, what what made you that type of orthodontist that also gets stuck in sometimes with uh with uh building out teeth Thank you, Arnold, for the appreciation because composite is really hard work. So this is why I understand that most orthodontists, you know, they, they are focused on ortho and this is totally fine, especially if you're treating children. It's not a big deal. But if you're treating adults, you need to know composite, in my opinion, because usually it, the teeth are worn really badly and if we align them, they look even worse than at the beginning. So you need to have a solution for that. And I I wanted to create the most beautiful smile that is possible for my patient, for each one individually, and still preserving their teeth, still making them feel these are their own like teeth they're, they were born with. They're, they're like their signature. It's their si signature smile. And um, this is why I wanted to learn about composite because I love being minimal invasive, preserving the good teeth, but just doing some enhancements. And you also do great composite work. So I, I really, I have huge respect. It is, a, you need to be concentrated a lot, right? Yes, no, definitely. It, it's, it's very, um, you, you can get very consumed in it. Um, 
trying to get things perfect and right. Uh, but it's really satisfying when the patients, you know, see their smiles and their confidence is transformed forever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're based in um, Vienna, Austria, but you know you're you're also teaching pretty much globally you know with uh ripe that that you teach with them um, um as well and i just wanted to ask what is life in your shoes like as a dentist i mean you're traveling you were in london the other day um you've got patients that you're treating you've got dentists that you're teaching uh, and obviously there's that balance of family life so what what is life uh, in your shoes like <laughs> <sighs> yeah, well, um, the hardest part is saying no to things. So it's it's so easy to say yes to everything because, you know, it's fun and be in, in London this weekend and next weekend there. And But then at some point, it, it feels like you are with 250 miles per hour in the highway and you know if something goes wrong, like if you get sick, you are in big trouble so it's a lot of stress and um basically you know i'm i'm nothing special everyone could do what i'm doing uh, it's just if you're dedicated and passionate enough to do it uh also to go through times when it's really tough so i have the highest respect for everyone who has children who has a family who who balances a practice and being maybe also active in the community, I have the absolute highest respect because I know how difficult it is. Yeah. How would you say the time is, um, the percentage in terms of time spent teaching, time spent working as a dentist and as an orthodontist, and um, just, I guess, time doing your other business that you need to be doing? How is that time allocated? Um, so, I see, I'm seeing patients three days a week uh, and the other two days, Monday and Friday, I work from at home. I do treatment planning. You know, I review all the clean checks, case designs, et cetera. I prepare lectures or I use the time to, to give a lecture live somewhere. But uh, lately it turned out that I'm also working on, on the weekends and I really want to <laughs> reduce that a little bit because it's, yeah. It's quite uh, a lot, uh, but so far it has been working out. I can imagine, I can imagine you're a very busy um, lady. I was, I was gonna also ask, I mean, you get to see um, how orthodontics, orthodontics has shifted from um, when you started working up to now. Um, are you able to tell us a, a brief summary of how you've seen things change especially with you know fixed being the main treatment modality to now aligners are growing in popularity and still growing in popularity i mean how have you seen things change yeah so i started doing ortho with braces and i have i've treated so many patients with braces that i really have a good sense for biomechanics and stuff and aligners are not something new so they are here for already 20 years but the advancement in technology has made it possible that we can treat much more difficult malocclusions much more complex cases and i i jumped in when you know it there was really a turning point when the technology enabled us to to use the 3d controls etc and I I was working with my partner in the clinic and we did very bold treatments and we saw okay it's working out so we 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 did even bolder cases and even more complex things and we saw okay if we if we really try to implement the biomechanics that we know we know how teeth move the reciprocal forces from braces etc we translate this into a line of treatment planning it really works and it's awesome and still you know Every time a patient comes in and I did something new, I like, wow, you're making so good progress. This is amazing. And the patient is like, yeah, why are you so surprised? I think to myself, okay, I've never seen that before. <laughs> but it's really like uh, I'm trying and, and it's working. Yeah. And um, I, I guess this, this is nothing new in terms of 
there's so many different aligner systems um, on the market. And I, when, I, when, when I think back, this probably was the same with fixed braces, that there were many different systems on the market. So I don't know if people ask you this, but do people ever ask you what is the best aligner system to be using? And what are you saying to that sort of question? I love the question. It's really not the aligner brand. It's what you do with it. Like you, Arnold, I'm sure you put a lot of time into your treatment planning. You have a lot of experience and you put all of this into your treatment plan. This is why your cases turn out so amazing. And the aligner at the end of the day is, is just a piece of plastic. It's really your know-how, um, what you put and the effort you put into it. Yeah. And... I guess, what would you say, so with aligners, it's not just the aligners themselves. Dentists have to navigate the software <laughs> that comes with, with the aligners. Um, in terms of softwares, do you see many differences between the different softwares? Is it pretty much the same? Um, does it bother you or do you have a preference? How do you navigate that yourself? Yeah, so this is really crucial. Uh, if you have an aligner system that allows you to do, you know, use the 3D control where you can move the teeth to your desired position, where you can place the attachments yourself, then you do not have to delegate everything to the technician because the technician is not here to do your treatment plan. This is your, this is our job as doctors. Uh, we only need to tell them how to stage the movement, like which teeth to move simultaneously, what to do sequentially. And you need something that allows you to do that. And if the software doesn't allow you to do any changes, you need to write every single detail to the technician, which is too time consuming. And at some point you give up or you cheat just very mild cases with two millimeter of crowding. Yeah. So... I mean, I, I want to just delve into that a little bit deeper because it can be daunting for a new dentist to start taking control <laughs> of the 3D um, controls. And, you know, you, you almost want to just, you know, just press approve without doing anything <laughs> and, and hoping for the best. So what would you say to those dentists who want to start out um, in providing a line of uh, therapy, but they don't really know what are they looking for in a treatment plan? You know, how are they going to really achieve the results that this software is saying can be achieved? What would you say to those people yeah. starting out? Yeah. So I guess we all started there. Uh, I, you know, that was a big challenge for me when I started doing a line of treatment planning. Like, okay, the simulation looks good. Look, teeth move where I want them to. But how on earth do I know if this is really going to happen? So this is why I'm very proud that with Ripe Global, we created the fellowship in Alina Orthodontics. It's the first orthodontic course designed for dentists that equips them with what they need to know so they can be successful in their Alina treatments. And it's a really cool program where, first of all, they learn how to navigate in the software. They learn about those principles they need to do the correct uh, treatment plans and how to diagnose and and treat their patients correctly. So honestly, I wish I could have done this, this course when I started, but I'm very happy that it's available now. Yeah. So would you say that's um, for somebody at the very beginning of the um, aligner therapy journey, they can get right into that, right? right yeah. With right Global. Yeah. So this is exactly designed for that. And even if they already have experience in a line of treatment, they learn it from a totally different approach. Like I, I know a lot of doctors who have achieved great results with aligners so far, but you know what I, they still do not feel confident because they are not really like, they know, do not know or do not understand why things work out. And this is where the fellowship really kicks in and, explains the biomechanics, how teeth move, how the liner transmits the forces onto the teeth and how they need to um, integrate that into their treatment plans. Yeah. Are you still doing um, fixed braces? Do you mix between the two? Do you have patients where you'll start off with fixed, finish with the liners, start with the liners, finish with, how are you 
um, using the tools available to you at the moment? I do not use braces anymore. I st stopped oh. doing braces a few years ago um, because it, it, I, don't, I don't like it. I don't think it's the best that I can offer to my patients. And I, I want to offer the best treatment to my patients. I have more planning, like the treatment planning is much more precise with aligners and the treatment experience for the patient is totally different. It's, it's so comfortable for them. They do not mind uh, how long treatment takes. And usually with aligners, it even takes less time and the time takes the patients enjoy more. So this is why I do not do braces anymore. I also do not do, uh, I do not switch between aligners and braces because in my opinion, it really doesn't make sense because mm. you need all the crowding that you have at the beginning because this is where the aligner works best to solve the crowding. And then to, yeah, it doesn't make sense to use braces and then finish with aligners or the other way around. So in terms of, I guess, innovation and trying to test what new things aligners can do, how, how do you approach, um, I guess, your discovery with aligners at the stage that you're at? Um, you're getting fantastic results already, but you know, how does someone like yourself continue to learn? You know, what is the next step for someone like yourself? Yes. Well, if I want to, uh, I, I would like to share what helped me the most, you know, learn uh, in my journey. And that was my camera, like taking pictures at every checkup, taking pictures generally. Like, you know that if you do a composite bonding, it looks great in the mouth. And you say, wow, it's fantastic. But in my case, if I take a picture and I say, oh no, how could I not see that? Like on a camera, you can see so much more because the object is not moving. So this alone helps you so much. And what in, in terms of aligner treatment it really helps if you take a look at the treatment plan that you approved, like what did I plan and what did I actually get? Compare the simulation to the final result in, in the mouth. Like, okay, where did things do not work out? Check how the, the movement were staged. And then you can see, okay, the patient where you, you see patterns where it worked out well where it didn't work that well and keep on using the things that work well and i try to uh, this is why I, what i try to do with my instagram account things that work really well with aligners for example you want to sew rotations to the hinge rotation this is really something that works in every case yeah yeah it, it's <laughs> so funny enough you're saying that because you know um recently i've started incorporating you know micro spacing and trying to get better control of teeth and hinge rotations. And then I see your page, which is talking about all of this already. And I'm like, if only I'd seen this 12 months ago <laughs> or, or back then you'd have saved me a lot of refinements. <laughs> yeah. You know, we all go that down that path and I'm, I'm so happy you, you're learning something because this is really why I do it. Yeah. What would you say excites you? Um, the most about um, working with aligners and even with teaching um, other traditions? What excites you at the moment? What excites me the most is, I guess, the, the patient reaction that I get, you know, that patients who really, usually those who come, they already been to several orthodontists, they already, been, they have been told this doesn't work with aligners, they need braces and, they, they come to me for another opinion and then I tell them, yeah, in my hands, this works really well with aligners. I'm specialized on that. So I can offer the, the solution with aligners. And they, okay, they, they, they give it a go. And then they really see how their smile changes and how it's working. And they're so fascinated. And uh, yeah, it's like a positive spiral, you know? Uh, this really fascinates me. And about teaching, I, I really... I love to share. I love to see people grow. Um, mm. This is something that really fuels me. Yeah. You're one of the first few orthodontists that I saw really talking about TADS. Um, so are you able to just give us a little like intro into what TADS are 
and um, what they might be useful for. Yeah. So TAT um, is the uh, acronym for Temporary Anchorage Devices. And they're little orthodontic mini screws that help us um, apply the forces that we need to, to apply. For example, if we have a canted smile where one side is hanging down, a canted occlusal plane, and you want to fix that, uh, you need to intrude the one side without extruding the other side. So you kind of need to intrude against an anchor. And this tab, this little screw in the bone can be the anchor where you can intrude the teeth. And as I told you, I treat with aligners exclusively. And when you do that, you need some auxiliaries like you need with braces. You also need um, elastics or whatever. And an auxiliary that works really well with aligners are tats, so you can keep the treatment very clean, invisible, and also keep the treatment time short. You can enhance anchorage, like if you do want to convert a class two into a class one, you can distalize, place an anchor, and then retrude all the other teeth against that anchor. Yeah. And this and that has always interested me, you know, in the with orthodontics, you know, there's always different trains of thought on the best way to get to the same end result. Um, how do you balance all of that in terms of being open to new ways of doing things and not completely shutting them off um, and still having that uh, awareness to know that, you know, maybe this way of doing things isn't proven. So that's mm -hmm. probably not something to do. Like, how do you handle all of that? Yeah, that's a good good question. Um, basically, I'm I'm very innovative, like innovative in in the way I'm thinking. I like to think outside the box. Uh, I like to discover new solutions. I'm very resilient to 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 fa to failure. Like I I'm so optimistic. Like I think, okay, if this doesn't work out the next uh, try will work out. So I'm, I'm re really a hopeless, optimistic, uh, <laughs> um, hopeful human being. Um, what I do if, you know, if something has not been tested very well, I go into the literature. So this has helped me a lot when, when I'm doing new procedures, I, I read everything I can in the literature. This is how I approach tests. Um, there, there's not much uh, information out there how to combine tats with aligners. So I wanted to look up everything I can get my hands on with tats. And those were papers where they combine tats with braces. And I thought, okay, this is how they did it with braces. I will use the tat, but just with aligners and find a new solution. And this worked out really well. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. When you think about how you prioritize things as a as a clinician you know some clinicians um the dentistry is their number one thing for some clinicians it's the teaching that's their number one thing uh for some clinicians it's the business aspect of dentistry that's their main thing and obviously clinicians can be a little bit of both um how would you number from one to three uh, being a teacher, being a clinician, um, and also being, uh, I guess, a, a, a business lady in some respect as well? Mm. Interesting question. I, I like it. For me, the number one is add value to another person's life. I can do that in the clinic. I can do that in in my teaching. And this, this generates uh, enough no income for me so that I'm happy. And this is really my number one goal. This is what what makes me happy at the end of the day. So it's it's how that's yeah, that's my, my goal when I wake up. I this is what I'm thinking about. Yeah. Fantastic. And just your your overall thoughts on where um, orthodontics is going. Um, what, what do you see, especially as you're traveling um, across different countries, meeting different clinicians? You know, what 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 things are you seeing? What similarities are you seeing across the board? What differences are you seeing across the board in 
where do you see this all going? So in terms of orthodontics, I think that being able to integrate artif artificial intelligence into our work will play a huge role. You know, artif artificial intelligence is going into every aspect in our lives. It, we cannot uh, shut the door uh, of that. Mm -hmm. So I think that it will play a huge role in a line of treatment. This is why this technique will advance very rapidly in the next few years. And I think that five years from now, we probably um, be treating almost all of our patients with aligners and mm -hmm. only those who, who really cannot afford some kind of treatment uh, will have braces. This is where I personally see the road going. So I think that there will be a huge change in orthodontics. Um, and yeah, of course, differences are, are similar, are different. There are differences in, in each country, but there are some principles that are the same patients, uh, want a comfortable treatment. Um, they want an invisible treatment. They all want beautiful smiles. And if aligners can do that, they, they will go for that option if they can afford at any point. Do you see a, a future where direct to consumer um, aligner treatments replace dentists and orthodontists? No. Uh, well, it, it will not um, replace dentists to orthodontists. But okay, this is my personal opinion. But I think that direct to consumer uh, aligners or orthodontics will, will be a much, much bigger thing in the future. This is why we. This is why it's so crucial to understand the technique, so we can treat the more difficult things that uh, that are not suitable for just uh, to be solved by an algorithm. Uh, this is why those who learn now how to work with the liners will have an advantage in the future, because the easy cases will be done by some kind of computer software, and yeah, so. I believe that even in the future, the, the conjunction of the human brain with AI uh, will be, be better than just AI alone. Perfect, perfect. And I, guess, I, I was going to say, you know, the same way aligners have taken the world of orthodontics by storm, I was going to say, what do you think will be the next thing? But I think you answered that already by talking about AI and how that's gonna be more involved in yeah. what, we're, what, what we're doing. Can you just explain how AI, in, I guess in practical terms or in simple terms, will be used more and more within a line of therapy? Well, honestly, I can only guess, but what I, where, uh, what my idea would be if I, I had to make a guess is that we feed the AI with data because AI is so much better at analyzing data than we are. So we are more like here for the emotional part at the communication to the patient and really getting to know what they want. But we feed the AI like with the x-rays, maybe even with the CBCT in our patients and the AI can analyze, okay, where is the bone density very dense? bit slower in order to avoid resorptions or something like that. This. So this is where I feel that everyone can bring in their talents and work to something that is even better. Yeah, perfect. Now, Dr. Claudia, thank you so much for your time. Um, like I said, I've been following you for some time now. I'm really inspired by the work that you do. Um, and it really makes me more I'm excited to, to learn about aligners. If people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way? To follow me on Instagram, it's dr for Dr. Claudia Pinter, uh, or join some of my uh, my courses at RIPE Global, the Fellowship in Aligner Orthodontics. This is probably how they can get the best of me. <laughs> um, and Anna, I just wanted to say thank you for this amazing interview. I really enjoyed it. You, you really uh, are generally interested in, in the person you interview and the questions you are ask are really interesting and this is really an art of doing an interview so you are doing an amazing job
Thank you so much. Uh, no, thank you very much. And um, guys, I will leave um, the details below that Dr. Claudia has been talking about. So make sure to check that out. If you're wanting to get started with the liners, definitely check check that out. Um, I know I will be at some point uh, getting involved with RIPE. Um, so, you know, check it out, guys. And I'll see you all um, at the next video.